Hey, good morning. This is Chuck English, Spring Piss and Rifle Fever and Lone Wolf Strength Training. Today, I'm going to be working on taking apart the HW30. Got it upside down because I already moved the screws. So, and have your handy container to put all your screws in. Those are already removed. Gonna put that in there. Anything you don't want to fall and get lost. This has a little washer, so I remove that. So put this aside in a safe spot. That's hopefully not going to get scratched and break your heart. And so I haven't seen any videos about totally removing the piston, and that's what I'm planning on doing. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. I've watched a few videos. So I got my handy dandy spring compressor here that I will use. So basically what I've seen so far is that these pins here have to be removed to remove the record trigger. And then there is a little screw right here that has to be removed. And by that time I will have the spring compressor on my rifle and remove that screw and then take that out. And then I will have to take the barrel off. And I'm probably going to have to do this video in sections. So, see how hard or easy it's going to be to remove some of these pins here. So, try, trying to get this stuff on camera. Oops. It's not going to be the easiest. Move the screwdriver out of the way for a second. I'm going to have to get a smaller screw driver to take off that other screw maybe that one so um, one thing I'm gonna say right away is when you're taking your trigger assembly out put your finger over your safety so it doesn't go flying and there's a spring in there you do not want to lose so it has these pins that I'm gonna punch out and I might have to tap them a little bit so I do have a little dowel here. I'm just going to set over that just to add a little height and maybe my block on the other end. Or maybe the other way around. That'll work. So there's two pins here to take out. one pin. My safety is actually right on top of this block so I think it'll be good while I'm punching this out. Oh, this pin just comes out easy as snot. So there's two pins. Oops. There's your rearward one and there is the forward one which is a little longer. Put those in your safety pal. Put your finger over that over the safety so it doesn't go flying. Remove your trigger. Set that off to the side. That's just a screwdriver. Remove your safety. You don't want to come out too easy. I'm going to use my punch to help. And there is my safety and there is my spring. Chris would just stay over there please. I don't know what you're doing. I'm not worried about that. Don't interrupt me again, please. I don't want to sound rude to my son, but I just want to focus on what I'm doing. If I get sidetracked, that's not good. I don't want to get sidetracked. Doing your uh, disassembly and reassembly, as you know, it's highly important that you do it without being interrupted. Because if you screw up, it can be a real pain. All right. We're going to try this little screwdriver to take out that little screw and I had seen one video where a guy just put a uh, his punch through there and held it in place like that then removed it but I don't want to do that I want to use my 
wood clamp spring compressor. So that's what I'm going to do. So all I'm going to do is put enough pressure down on this. So it doesn't come flying out. So got that on. I guess I can set this whole thing back up on the table again. And now I can just hold it like this too. This will work fine. Take my screwdriver and I'm going to take this little screw out. It fits perfect. I need to tighten that down just a hair more. I need to tighten this down a little more. You can see it putting pressure against that screw. We do not want that. So here's the little screw. Put that in my pal. Now I'm going to release pressure. Set this whole unit down. I'm going to unscrew this. Sorry, this is taking a while, probably kind of boring. So I'm backing it out like this. So I'm just going to push on that. There we go. There was definitely some spring load there. So that comes out. Pull that out. I'm just going to set it there. I'm not going to put that in my can. Spring will come out, and you can see how loose the spring guide is in this here. So, I will be making a shim to tighten that up for that. That's just going to sit on the table. My spring, which will be kept, I'm going to replace it with a Vortec guide. We're going to put that right there now to remove. The piston, I'm going to have to remove the barrel. So, and a pin. Actually, maybe I can just remove the pin, which is right here, to remove the barrel. Because to get to the piston seal, I got to get, get that out of the way. How thick is that? So I got to, I'm sorry, this is not the best angle. Get this a little better. So I got to take this little pin out to lift that because it's a little, it's a little rod that's going over there that's keeping this cocking lever nice and close to the action. Like so. I'm going to take my little screwdriver hammer and I'm going to give it a tap. Maybe I'll give it a tap this way. That way you'll be able to see what I'm doing, kind of. <laughs> Try the smaller one. It's definitely not coming out too easy. It's starting to move a little bit. 
I definitely don't like to wail on my air rifles, so I take my time with them. Let's go back on the table. Too rickety like that. If you have an extra person to help you, it might help you a lot. Use this little dowel rod here to pry this up a little bit. That feels good. That's keeping it up pretty good. Was. Oh, goodness. It usually doesn't go too well like when you want it to. Closer to having it out. Let's see if I can wiggle that thing out. It's definitely snug. There, <laughs> finally got that out. This little pin is what it was in there. So that was keeping that rod in down so it can't raise any. <clears throat> so now I need to break that open a little bit. Definitely gonna have to take the barrel off. So take this screw off. If we run out of time, the camera's probably just gonna stop and I'm gonna have to restart. I wanna try to get this angle back down. So I gotta take that off. At least that's coming on loose nice and easy. Put that pin in there. I'm going to put that screw head in there. And then there is a little washer in here that I'm going to take out eventually. When you take your barrel off, make sure you cock it open. It takes the pressure off the joint. Otherwise, you're going to be fighting it, and it's not going to be good. I like putting my fingers around this screw when I'm taking it off. That way, I hopefully don't slip off and gouge my rifle, which is not a happy thing. It's definitely not a happy thing when you do that. Put that in my barrel. So... Take this open. We got our shims right there. I'm gonna take the shims. I'm gonna put those in there. So now that it's loosened, I should be able to get this out of the action. So there we go. We take that off. And <laughs> haven't run out of time yet. So now we're gonna take the piston out. So I take this screwdriver and I pull this out. You don't have to crawl around, Christopher. <laughs> Unless you just want to crawl around. 
So there's the piston. It's really gooey and yucky because the Virock over lubes the chamber, the piston chamber in here, and makes it a mess. So I'm going to pause the video here for part one, and I'm going to see if I can get a spring shim guide together and install the Vortec piston and everything, and I will make a part two on that. So God bless everyone. Thank you for stopping in and having the patience to be with me on this. And I'm going to clean up this mess. I got a bunch of paper towels with me. And we will get back to this on part two.